Okay, there are some minor differences between a don't damage your little nipples in the vise. There are some minor differences between a number three injector and the others. Uh, the one number three injector has some slight differences inside it. So I'm going to do this one first and then I'll show you the differences inside the number three. Move the copper washer and put a 15 millimeter deep socket on the cap here. You want to hold the injector nozzle down right there so that it uh, nothing falls out of place. And then gently fold the nozzle over to the side. There is a pentel inside there. You want to keep the pentel with uh, the nozzle. Don't let the pentel get mixed up with the other uh, nozzles. Okay, so with a little magnet, we can pull out this little, um, it's a kind of like a guide for this pin. So I'm going to sit that there in order. The step on this guide goes downwards as we have the injector in the vise. And we could have pulled it out along with this component, but I wanted you to see the parts individually. So I'm sitting that down in order. This really can't be installed the wrong way. It can't be flipped around like that, and it definitely can't go like that. It would be impossible to do that. Okay, so after that you have this shaft, and the shaft supports that little washer or shim and then underneath I'm pulling these out together so that you can kind of keep the order then I would call that a spring seat right there and the reason I call that a spring seat is because this spring right here seats inside it like that all with the shaft running through the center of it and the rest of the things rest of the things need to be you need to turn this upside down and all that we've taken apart so far should be the same between uh, the number three injector and the others but uh, the components down here are slightly different on the number three so I'm just going to try and dump these out in order there you have a large washer or shim and then you have another what I would call a spring seat right there and then you have a spring. This surface right here is precision machine. Don't bang that up against the the don't bang that up against anything. And then you should have one shim or maybe two. And it's hard for me to get it out of there. So it looks like there's only one shim. Let me look down in there. It's very hard to tell. It looks like there might be another one in there. If so, it's stuck in there pretty good. Well, after trying to get it out for a little while, it, it looks like there's one down in there, another shim, but I can't get it to come out. If, if that's a shim, um, we're just going to leave it in place. And we're going to clean the injector real good. But I don't think it's a shim. I think it just kind of looks like it's a shim. So we're going to do some real good cleaning on all these parts, and then we'll reassemble it. We have cleaned the parts and laid them out in order. We are getting ready to assemble it. Uh, there's a washer, spring, spring seat. That's a big washer. And then there is the shaft with a spring and a spring seat and a washer on top of it. And then this part. And then that uh, guide collar. And uh, let's assemble this thing. Okay, the shim goes in the bottom. And then the spring. And then the spring seat, the spring seat does not have a hole through it like uh, 
the upper one. And then this is like a large washer or shim, and it actually sits across the top of a step. And um, that's how you can tell it from the other ones. Okay, these last three things I've been holding together to keep them in order. And we have a spring. We have a spring seat that has a hole in it. And then we have a washer that goes on top of the spring seat or shim. And then we have the pen that goes down through the center of the spring and it also fits in that large washer that sits on the step. So this piece, it would be difficult to get it installed the wrong way, but uh, it does have a hole right there in the injector body and it lines up with that hole right there. And then you have this part that sits in there, step side to step will really only go one way. This is our new nozzle. You want to be careful that the pentel doesn't fall out of it. And of course that hole will line up with the hole in that part of it. And you sit it down on those pins. Let's put a little bit of lubricant on those threads. And then you put the nut cap and collar on there. I'm going to hold down on the nozzle so it stays in place. And I don't think that Bosch actually releases the torque spec on this. I think anything you find on the internet is going to be uh, what somebody has reverse engineered. Uh, there's some uh, people who say 33 or 34 is the spec. And then there's some people who say they leak when they're 33 or 34, and so they go 33 or 33, and then 45 degrees. And uh, that's what I've basically done. And so I have my torque wrench set on 33. I've had good success doing it that way. Tighten my vice up a little. So there's 33. We'll just add a little paint mark to make our life easy. And we'll put a paint mark at 90. And we'll put, put a dot halfway between for 45 because we're only going to 45 degrees. And you want to make sure the inside of your socket is clean. I just cleaned it out uh, the same process I did on the injector. So it should be just as clean. We're going to call that good. And we put our compression washer on there. Now we could put a little Eva grease on there or we could just uh, drop those in the holes in the head before we mount the injectors in there and I think that's what we're going to do. And of course doing the number three injector is slightly different so we'll show that one also. Okay this video is becoming way too long so I'm going to break it up into a second part. If you want to be sure and see the number three injector disassembled and reassembled and how to install it in the car uh, be sure and subscribe so you don't miss it and click the notification icon that looks like a bell and YouTube will notify you when the next video comes out remember you can donate to the continued production of these videos at www.kansascitytdi.com and I'm also trying to become approved for as an Amazon affiliate so if you could click the link in the description and buy something through Amazon through my affiliate link that would uh, help me to get approved as an Amazon affiliate it would be greatly appreciated You don't have to buy anything specific dog food car parts tools. It doesn't matter But uh, if you want to watch uh, some more of my videos There'll be some listed on the screen and don't forget to click the subscribe button and thanks for watching